Aberdeen and Recovery. Aberdeen and Recovery. Aberdeen and Recovery. Aberdeen and Recovery. We're here, here for, for you. you. Building that bridge from dependence to independence. You're listening to Recovery on Air on Shmoo ninety nine point eight FM. I'm Lindsay from Aberdeen and Recovery, and joining me this week is Dermot, also from Air, Sarah from Shmoo, and hoping to join us a little later is Victoria, also from Air. Last week we spoke about the importance of keeping connected whilst in recovery, which is more important now than ever before, and the new opportunities that have been presented to us with the lockdown. So as we are huge fans on this show of practising what we preach and so good at taking our own advice, I'm delighted that we've got a very special guest on the show today and we are joined by Derek from the Scottish Recovery Consortium based in Glasgow. He'll be speaking a bit about who they are and what they've been up to. You're listening to Recovery On Air at Shmoo 99.8 FM. Recovery, a journey of discovery. As I said uh, before, we are joined by Derek from the SRC. Hi Derek, how are you? Hi Lindsay, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How have you been getting on? Uh, not too bad, just trying to keep busy and trying to like, I think what you have been speaking about, trying to be connected and trying to, uh, I just, just stay connected myself, like, eh? and obviously the challenges and new experiences that are coming up through work and stuff like that. Like, eh? Definitely, definitely. So just to, to let our listeners know a little bit more, um, what exactly is SRC? What do you guys do? So uh, so basically, the Scottish Recovery Consortium, we're a nationally commissioned organisation. So we're directly funded by the Scottish Government. So we were initially set up to support the development of recovery communities across Scotland. That was kind of introduced when uh, the Road to Recovery strategy came out for the Scottish Government. So Scot uh, Scottish Recovery Consortium was then established to support the development of emerging recovery communities across Scotland. Mm -hmm. I mean, so myself, what my role is, again, we're quite a big, organ uh, a small organisation. We have staff team only six, six people. So my role specifically is a National Recovery Community Development Officer. So what my role is today is to support the development of recovery communities and that could really differ and vary depending on areas and what's actually on the there like eh? so i've only been with the scottish recovery consortium for what seven eight months or something like that and it's been uh, an amazing experience so far it's been great to really because I, I was involved with northwest recovery communities in glasgow for about two years and I was always involved in some of the stuff that the SRC have done in the past, like recovery walks and different sort of events that bring a uh, lived experience together. So I already knew some of the people from different recovery communities across Scotland, but actually getting this job uh, gave me that opportunity to get to know them better and go out and visit the different recovery communities. So it's been, for me so far, it's been a really amazing experience because you're getting to see the valuable work of people we love to experience in recovery communities all across Scotland. Like, and, and there is some amazing work, obviously some of the stuff like Air Aberdeen and Recovery are doing as well, like, some great work. I'm really, I'm, I've, I've, I'm a bit nervous about being on the radio, but <laughs> at the same time, when, when, I, when I know like Dermot pretty well and I've, I've seen the stuff that Aberdeen and Recovery are doing and that is one thing that I really thought was a really interesting thing, like recovery radio shows. I mean, so it's good to be actually on it and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but, well, it's great to have you joining us for sure. Dermot? Afternoon, everyone. Um, it's, it's, yeah, uh, good to be here um, and thanks for joining us, Derek. Um, it's, it's good to good to see you, um, and not just on your, your voice on the other side of our phone. Mm -hmm. um, I would just like it's a follows on from the topics that Lindsay and I were discussing last week about connection and getting used to all this new technology and some of the benefits that we've come out of it. But SRC, you know, you know, 
connection is is probably one of the biggest things that your organization does um really in the last couple of years it was done amazing work to just bring all the different lived experience communities in scotland and i really do feel the the work that you guys and the rest of the team have put into put together is really it gives certainly a sense of connection you know the, 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 like previously it was like quite um siloed you know there, there was there was recovery communities active in different parts but they were so sort of working very localized whereas scottish recovery consortium the the work that has been done especially in the back of the recovery walks i think that's been a massive um joining force um very visible um how, how how have you guys firstly how did you get used to the new technologies about using these virtual platforms and stuff and um, was it easy was it hard um and and have, have you seen benefits that your, your job is all about communication so is this assisting you uh, definitely like exactly the same as what you said and i had like discussions with yourself and lindsay yesterday where we were doing the interviews for the src's channels and stuff like that so exactly the same as yourself We've had this technology there for probably for a good while anyway, but it's like there's a bit of anxiety and fear that comes along with using this sort of technology, Zoom and stuff like that. So it's always been there, but well, for me anyway, the preferred choice would always be going and meeting people face to face anyway. Like, I, but again, the possibilities that have came through this Zoom stuff will assist us in the future. Like, I, without a doubt, like before. Before like, we started using things like Zoom, I would be going out to different recovery communities and again, my role is to support the development of recovery communities, but being based in Glasgow, and just I'll just say as well, because I never mentioned that at the start, that you might be able to tell through my accent that I'm not actually from Glasgow, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually from, from Dundee, so I'm actually a, a fellow East Coaster and stuff like that, so if I need a translator, I'm sure it'll be I'm sure it'll be fine actually in this context <laughs> being we can on the East down. Coast, right? <laughs> but I I so as you're then working these different recovery communities and your ability to be present in that recovery community is very difficult because you could take like a hundred miles to travel to get there and stuff like that. So being in a role or recovery community development for me, if somebody's developing a recovery community. It's about being part of that community. It's about being in that area, being there, being part of uh, part of the community, basically like I. So that has been one of the biggest challenges I've felt. Like I, and I'm, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm good with people and I'm good at like uh, like I'm quite good at like engaging and connecting with people and stuff like that. But for the distance that that we that it makes it it makes it pretty difficult like you know what I mean but again the, the thing the thing is as well though our role is to support the development of recovery communities our role isn't it to develop that recovery community that the, the role of developing the recovery community has always got to be by the people that are in that community in that area because it is their community so I see my role there as uh just supporting I mean a lot a lot of the stuff that we do today is about uh Probably, we've got a lot, a, lot, a lot of toolbox of different ideas that we can use, like things like conversation cafes, uh, different different sort of stuff. Like so, my role is just to, to really enable that recovery community to, to be able to do this stuff for themselves. Sales like, but in the context of Zoom, for me, like we've already had a few. Like the thing with Zoom is that you'll be able to now start to get lived experience, whether that be leads or people for recovery communities for all across Scotland coming together and start being able to share ideas. I think that is one of the, the benefits because again, we, we feel that we are we are the people that help the recovery communities to connect. And what better way to do that by having like uh, like monthly meetings where you've got like like yourselves for Aberdeen in recovery, uh, maybe people for South Ayrshire, Borders, Ab uh, Dundee, all the, all the different areas coming together and sharing with each other what has worked in their area and what hasn't worked. And again, we know that every area is different. So when you look at somewhere, we were in a, a meeting yesterday and you're looking at places like Argyll and Butte, which has got one 
sort of ADP area for the fall Argyle Butte, and it's a massive, massive area. And then you look at somewhere like Glasgow, that is, prob it's, it's, a, it's a big area, but that, that is split into three different ADP areas. So the sort of challenges that Argyle and Butte face are totally different from what Glasgow would face like. Hey? But again, it's just about sharing ideas and then people going back to their areas and trying things and what works might not work in their area, sort of thing like hey? I mean, but Ashwin, thanks for that, Derek. Um, so in terms of, of moving forward, just to, to pick up on the, the last wee bit that Dermot said about um, the technology and what's the sort of positives, you know, it's it's basically that yeah, I think when, when we spoke yesterday, there was, um, it was mentioned, you know, the geographical area of Scotland is so huge, um, you know, and, and it's not, not always easy to be in places in person. So, you know, if, if we get sort of up to speed, we're using these technologies. And I just want to, to mention there as well, obviously, you know, we're using Zoom, but there are other, um, you know, programs out there. That, that folk can use. Um, but yeah, so once we're sort of up and and experts in the technology, it can it can only help to definitely to creates, for me what it does is it creates that national voice, right? So when you think about like Aberdeen, Aberdeen as a voice is a one area, but when you start bringing Aberdeen, Dundee, Ayrshire, Borders, Argyll and Butte, uh, Dumfries and Galway, you start to then create a collective voice and that collective voice is stronger than the one individual area like I so for me being able to just send out a zoom link and get all these different leads and all these different people for recovery communities to come together to create that national voice as a powerful tool and again it's like what we said er er earlier it's like the technology has already been there but it kind of takes a situation like the schnau to actually force us to use the technology and that's that's the thing that I love about recovery communities and I've said that to both of you yesterday. This this COVID-19 thing hit and within a matter of weeks recovery communities, fellowships like Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous and things like that, smart recovery and stuff like that, within a matter of weeks they'd moved everything that they were doing face to face in their community to an online, uh, an online format and for me that just shows the resilience within recovery communities. It's like, we're here, we want to help people and we want to support our communities to, like, to move forward. And I, I, was, I was just really impressed by how quick it happened and how, and we've, we've also got on our, uh, we've created like, the Recoverist Network and see before this, this, ha this happened, COVID-19 happened, we were struggling to get recovery communities to share the work that they're doing on the Recoverist Network. Then see as soon as this happened, every recovery community was then sharing what online stuff they were doing yeah. on the Recoverist Network. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've then got Glasgow sharing other online stuff. And then that means that not only people from Glasgow can uh, connect with that, people from Aberdeen can kind of connect with that. And then that goes the same for like, when Aberdeen are sharing their online timetables. People from all over Scotland can start connecting with that stuff. So. A lot of positives, as much as it's been a difficult time and it's hard to be when recovery is all about connection, it's moving from isolation, for being isolated to being connected with others and then this, this, this pandemic hits and suddenly we're isolated and told to be within our house. So I, I, think, I think it's just testament to recovery communities that within a week we were finding new ways of connecting with each other and keeping each other safe. Because like, that's what recovery is about. It's about connecting and, and uh, it's about connecting with others and being able to share what's going on for you and stuff like that. So I've been impressed by that one. You're listening to Recovery On Air at Schmoo 99.8 FM. Recovery, a journey of discovery. So Derek, on top of um, sort of improving connections uh, in what SRC have been sort of do generally um, on a day-to-day -day basis with looking particularly at the this lockdown situation 
Um, what else is it that SRC have been have been doing to to help keeping people connected? So probably the things that stick out in my mind would be we've, we've started on a, a Monday evening. We've got like a, a Zoom meeting, but that's that's for like people we lived experience that are working within services because obviously we know that there's a lot of like the risks have became a wee bit higher for people working within services and maybe people might get asked the things that they might not feel 100% comfortable with but they feel that they need to because their employers are asking them to do it so we created this group where people with lived experience can come on on a Monday evening and share honestly about how they're feeling within their work roles within and within this current sort of context and that so that's been going pretty well as well. Uh, we also we got £30,000 for the Scottish Government, that was for the Staying Connected Scotland Fund. Basically what that was, was about uh, Scottish Government gave us this £30,000 and it was to be for people in recovery or people we love to experience to help them get connected to uh, online stuff. Because obviously, as you, as you know, like, and not everybody has got like, the technology to get uh, to get on online and stuff like that. Some people have maybe got like old fashioned mobile phones and things like that. So basically we got thirty thousand pounds for the Scottish government and again that was the same the same as I'd said earlier. I was kind of blown away by the response fair recovery communities uh we that like I we had thirty thousand pounds and within six or seven days we managed to get that thirty thousand pounds out to recovery communities all across Scotland. And what I found was uh, particularly what I, what I liked about that was that people were really responsible. It's like, see, sometimes when you put out that there's funding available, people can start applying for MacBook Pros and things like that, <laughs> iPads and stuff like that, but everybody was really respectful. Also, like, I think when we put the fund out, we said that in order to access the fund, you need to contact either myself or my colleague, Michaela, so we can explain a wee bit further what the fund was about. And the fund was actually about the most vulnerable people. So every time I was speaking to somebody uh, in regards to the fund, it was like, this is not, you, you, you need to go out and do a bit of work yourself. You need to go out and identify people within your community that have not got a mobile phone or a smartphone and, and aren't able to connect to that stuff. So I, again, same idea as what I spoke about earlier about uh, I was blown away by how quick recovery communities moved everything online. I was also blown away by how quick recovery communities identified the people within their community that didn't have access to the online stuff and the manner in which that applied for this fund. And so again, testament to recovery communities. We got that £30,000 and there was no way we were a small staff team that we had the, the capacity to like get that money out there without the support of recovery communities and I, and I posted it on Twitter because I really did feel that like as we said about it's quite difficult because of the geographical area but when I posted it on Twitter saying that that fund was now ended and the money was gone I felt like it was a team effort to get that money out there and that's that's what I was like it was like it was no longer Aberdeen in recovery it was no longer like uh, uh, recovery air it was uh, Recovery Community Scotland, like a team effort, and we managed to get away. Oh, we're, we're most vulnerable people connected with either smartphones or data sims or tablets, depending on what, what people's ability was to use this technology. So I was blown away by that as well. And I think, um, Derm, I'll, I'll echo me here in saying that, that Aberdeen and Recovery benefited from, from an application to that fund. I'll let, I'll let Derm speak a bit. Um, about that, but we are obviously very grateful for that. Absolutely, um, and down to well, a couple of couple of topics I'll come in with. But yeah, that the air air made an application in that that fund, and we do have uh, we can use that fund to assist people who um, maybe have to use their their, their phones um, if they don't have access to Wi-Fi, um, and they're having to try and use their mobile phone um, data uh, to connect onto online meetings and it just eats up, it just really eats up your data. So um, we have, uh, through the use of that funds, we can uh, assist people. Um, so um, applications can come in from membership um, and we will deal with them as they, they, they come through. 
the other thought that came into my head is, as you were ch uh, speaking there, uh, Derek, was uh, uh, Jordan, your, your chief executive, um, our man, I, I get it. Boss. Yeah, the <laughs> boss. Yeah, the boss. Um, uh, he he um, shifted the, the SRC, Scottish Recovery Consortium, to uh, other, another an, an acronym um, when he took uh, post, and it was support, represent, and connect. And, and would you be able to give us a little bit of a, an idea about how SRC have been representing the lived experience communities, but on that high level, especially a lot of the work that, that, that Jardin's doing, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, he's sitting on some very high level boards, um, um, advisory boards to the Scottish Government, really making them aware of the issues that are facing the lived experience communities. Could you maybe give us a, a little bit of an idea about how SRC are representing us at that very senior level? And again, going back on what I was just speaking about earlier, the stuff that I did mention was the really front-facing stuff, the stuff that we are able to do and, and people are able to see the different, uh, the benefit of that stuff. But again, there is a lot of stuff that we have been doing behind the scenes and Jardin has been doing a lot of that stuff. Jardin's involved in different means with Scottish Government uh, uh, contingency plans and things like that. So that's where a lot of that, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes before like funds like the Staying Connected Scotland Fund comes out like right? so like Jardin does a lot of representation on behalf of like recovery communities across Scotland within Scottish Government. But we've also got Michaela. So she's the lift experience officer for Scotland as well. So she's she's put together uh, what what we're called LEARN, which stands for the Lift Experience Representative Network. And again that's quite similar to what I'd spoken about earlier about the benefits of this Zoom technology for like bringing recovery communities together for all across Scotland. So before this happened and Zoom and stuff like that was, we were having lived experience uh, events, but it was like you were having to pay for people or get people to travel to Aberdeen, Inverness, all the different borders uh, in Dumfries and Galloway to come to Glasgow, the centralised sort of location for that, that representative forum sort of thing like I, but through the power of Zoom, like we can now start to hear these lived experience and, and a lot a lot of this a lot of this stuff is like Scottish government directly ask us like to get feedback or, or to find out what is happening within recovery communities across Scotland. So we everything that we're gathered through the lived experience representative network is going back to Scottish government or Jardin's representing the vital lived experience within the sort of context and stuff like that as well. Can I? Absolutely. And, and I think your, your example there about the LEARN, um, the Lived Experience Representative Network, um, I remember the first meeting that was arranged down in Glasgow, and in practical terms, if we just very roughly cover, uh, there was guys came all the way down from Shetland, I remember was a guy from, no, it was Orkneys, mm -hmm. wasn't it? He came down from Orkneys, there was a bunch of us come down from Ayr, there was guys from Dundee, from yeah. uh, Kyle and Butte, it was, it, was, it was one of the best widely represented meetings I've, I've ever attended and that was in the back of the work uh, uh, Michaela, yourself and, and the other girls in the team, Heather and, and Danny mm -hmm. um, and it pulled together but you know we all rely on, on funding but at the end of the day it wasn't misuse of funding but that mm -hmm. event itself must have cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds in people having to travel from <laughs> different areas whereas <laughs> use the Zoom as a platform to do that we can connect on a more regular basis and it makes it so much simpler and so much more cost effective. That is one of the beauties I see about this, this process. Definitely, totally agree and I definitely think that there is still always going to be a place for getting everybody to come oh, yeah. together to like, to like Glasgow or, or wherever that is. It doesn't yeah. need to be Glasgow, it could be anywhere in Scotland but bringing people together for that face-to-face -face stuff but it does mean that when things and, and when Scottish Government is asking about stuff we can get the voice of lived experience instantly. So Scottish Government could come at us on a Monday and yeah. say, could we get some uh, information on this, that or the next thing? And by the Friday, we could hear a report written that's, that's uh, a representative of lived experience or recovery communities across Scotland. And we can get that and report within a week. Like I. That's representation that the lived experience community nationally has never had before. Aye. So it is, this is definitely one of the benefits no. I see coming out of this. No. And I think, I think like, as I've said, I've only been at the SRC for what, uh, like six, about 
no far off a year in June, a year in June, right? So I've only been there coming up for a year and there was a lot, a lot of good work done up until this point and a lot of good stuff like that. The, like obviously recovery community started back in Scotland probably about 10 years ago or something like that. Like, okay? So there's been a lot of good work to get the voice of lived experience to where it's at just now. But I think over the past year or two years, it's like the powers that be, Scottish government and stuff like that, are really starting to listen. Like, okay? And I think uh, Hain, the ability to use Zoom platforms and stuff like that to make uh, to get that voice quicker is only going to benefit us in, in the future. I think I think we're in a, a really good time just now. I think the the release of like, Scottish government's new addiction uh, drug and alcohol strategy, right, suspecting recovery, has opened up a lot of doors for us because there's a lot of mention to lived experience within that strategy. There's a lot of mention to uh, advocacy and stuff like that, a rights based approach, like I and I think. Where we're at now is that the voice to lived experience is definitely starting to come of age. Like I, we're starting to really understand how these systems and, and how this stuff, this works like policies and things like that. Like I, so I think, I think the first 10 years of us getting involved in this stuff, we've just sort of learned. And I think that's a good thing about people we lived experience. We like to learn. We really care about what it is that we do. And we really want to make positive change. Like I, so I think we've learned a lot in the past 10 years. And I think we're now at that point where we can effectively be uh, part of make it, making a difference or making changes within system and systems. Like I mean, so yeah. I think it's a, it's a good time to be involved in this stuff. Like I, and I think some of the learning that we have done and, and the, the experience we've gained in the last 10, 10 years or so, um, that's now allowing us to share that experience out with just the addictions field. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're making great moves and um, broadening horizons into mental health, physical health, et cetera, et cetera. So the learning that we've had um, uh, is it's, it's not just singularly to the addictions field. No, without a doubt. Because I do, it's like, when I look at me and like personal addiction and main recovery and stuff like that, it's like, I, I, I know now that I took drugs because I struggled with self, like I, so... I mean, for me, that is, that is more about my mental health, my problems. I start to find out what it was that I suffered for when I stopped taking alcohol and drugs. Like, once I stopped using, that's when I really start to find out what it was that I suffered for, basically, was it? Mm -hmm. I think that's been one of the, the big things that's came out of it, is it's looking deeper of, you know, what, why are you doing that? And I think, as you've said, the recovery communities have really came together using this technology. And, Yes, okay, it's not the way we want it to be, but I think we really can take the positives and it's about inclusion as well. And, you know, the recovery communities can be such an isolated place already that if we can try and get them through and through the money that you guys have got be rewarded to make sure everyone has internet and know that we've been looking at options like that as well, that will then be with them for forever. You know, we don't, doesn't say at the end of lockdown, we then take away that phone or you take away that Zoom. Um, so I think it's great that we can go forward, we can really use this crisis situation to our benefit and hopefully we can keep totally things agree. going. And I do, and I've always, like me personally, I've always seen recovery communities as much more than for people in recovery. Like I, I think that recovery communities is something that could influence your wider community. Like I, it's like, I, I, I've been involved in like different sort of groups within Glasgow and stuff like that and we'd like a, one example would be there was a, what was it called? Uh, it was, it was at the, the White End Centre, so it was like the recovery group that they had they hear there on a Friday. It's like a great example because their recovery cafe is on at the same time as uh, just the normal cafe. And it's very integrated, so it's not just people in recovery that come along to that. It's like people from the wider community, people like... Uh, other, other older people and stuff like that are also involved and come along to that cafe. And th things that came for it, you ended up paying people the lived experience that were involved in that recovery cafe started becoming like bingo callers for different groups that were going, going on within the centre. So I think I think it's just that that positive impact that recovery communities makes on the actual community is, is something that I think should be celebrated as well. Right? Thanks, guys. And yeah, definitely. I think that's what every recovery community would would say is is part of their aim is is making recovery visible, you know, and, and that's the, the aim, really. It's 
it's nothing to be ashamed of and hide these people away. It's, you know, we, we can contribute valid, um, valid uh, contributions to, to the general, general public and general life. Um, Aye, and that's one of the things, one of the things that I do and I love about the SRC is because before I started working with the SRC or knew about the SRC, I was kind of anonymous in my recovery and there was probably a bit of shame attached to like being an addict and stuff like that and I never really, really spoke about it but it's like that way now where it's like uh, over the past couple of years like people in my, I would never let people at my gym know that I was in recovery like I, but now people in my gym know that I'm in recovery for addiction, like I, and it's like, it's that way where it's like, it's starting to uh, become okay to be in recovery, rather than trying to hide it and be, be anonymous, and again, I've got loads of respect for like, anonymous fellowships, because I'm part of the anonymous fellowship myself, like I, and, and I always will be, but at the same time, I still think that there's, it's like, the fellowship's anonymous, but I choose to be visible and, and make a difference and, and hopefully that makes a difference. I, you see it all across Scotland, people are starting to become more visible like I, and I think is really contributing to challenging stigma within our society surrounding addiction. Definitely and that's something that's came up over many many shows that we, we've, we've done in the past is the, the stigma. You're listening to Recovery On Air at Shmoo 99.8 FM recovery a journey of discovery so we've uh, we've been joined by victoria she managed to to pop in for the last little little bitty we've had some really good conversation with derek from the src um and and promoting the the connections and new connections that we can make um during this time and taking positives out of the perhaps negative world that we're in at the moment. Um, and on that note, I would just like to ask my guests um, what new things you might have taken up during, during this period of lockdown. Um, Derek, if we start with you, have you taken up anything new or tried any new things? I wouldn't, say, any, any, I wouldn't say anything new, but in the past, I, like, I've got like, a degree in music technology, so we're always into like, recording music and doing stuff like that. So the bit of free time that I've had when I've not been working, <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> is, um, <laughs> I've been doing uh, a wee bit, I've been learning to uh, use the decks and stuff like that, so DJ decks. I've also been looking at uh, different technology. we are looking at maybe doing some like, live broadcast. Uh, I did, I'm part of another group, the Recovery Collective. So we like we put on like music events and stuff like that. So we're talking about new ways of like connecting with people because obviously our event this year had to be cancelled because of coronavirus and stuff like that. So we've been like uh, how we can do live broadcasts, maybe like uh, podcasts or we like live music sets and stuff like that. So I've been because I'm a bit geeky that way. I've been learning how to do all the radio broadcasting technology and reading and learning all that sort of stuff. So I've quite enjoyed it. It's been good to actually. Stuff that I used to love, that I hardly do anymore, get back into using that that sort of stuff and learn that technology again. So it's been fun. Brilliant, yeah, very much a chance to um, look back at perhaps things you used to enjoy and just haven't had the time. Now we've got more time than we can fill. Dermot, what about yourself? Have you been getting up to anything new? Um, I I I don't think new. I I. I as part of my own recovery journey, I've 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 sort of very active out in the back garden, and I've got various different projects that I, I keep myself busy with. So um, probably nothing new, but I've because I'm at home a lot more. I'm I'm making some better use of the time that I've got, and I've been uh, uh, I managed to because the, the 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 garden centres are all closed now, um, obviously with the lockdown. So uh, I put I sowed some seeds three or four weeks ago. Um, in the greenhouse and become a real grand and put up <laughs> my seeds and all that stuff and the weekend there on Sunday um, in the morning uh, I, I took the first two three two three trays and got the hanging baskets all loaded up with, with these seeds and they were, they were looking great they were like four or five inches high and standing up proud and I got them all in and the baskets were looking really good and came in um, and uh, 
there was uh, a rain, a, a spurge of rain in the afternoon. So after the rain, I went out just to see how things were going. <laughs> you know, these lovely green things. It's all like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh battered to death in the rain. <laughs> so, um, but like all things in nature, they're, 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 sturdy, they're sturdy roots and they've, they've got some good foundations. So I'm hoping that the, the sun today will help them all come up and stand up nice and proud. So, so nothing, nothing new, but I'm um, devoting a little bit more time to the, the things that really um, let me chill out. Um, and I'd, I'd, I'd been missing the opportunities, just getting a wee bit too much involved with work and stuff. So that's, that's allowed me to engage with some of that nice creative stuff. So. Brilliant, thank you. Yes, taking advantage of the extra time to do do more of the things that you love. So, Victoria, welcome. I'm glad you could join us. And um, what oh, kind of what new kind of things have you been getting up to over the past sort of month? Well, basically, the the most new thing. Um, I'm quite early recovery. Um, I've been using this lockdown time to get to know myself. <laughs> um, basically getting used to my own company, which is hard, but just starting off, like what I mean by that is not having distractions, not having my phone in my hand or the music in the background, just sitting in my own company. And um, so yeah, I've been doing that a lot over the past few weeks. Um, and I am starting to enjoy my own company. Um, which I could never have done this time last year, you know. Um, so yeah, that's that's been a real positive for me. Brilliant, thanks, Victoria. Yeah, I guess there'll be a, a few people out there who'll be doing a little bit of soul searching, and and yeah, you you spoke a couple of weeks ago on the show about getting to know yourself and having that relationship with yourself, and that is hugely important. Um, not just in recovery, again, for for everyone, and when you're stuck sort of, you know, in that isolation, potentially, you know, you, you need to be, be able to spend time with yourself. So that's all learning and all good. And Sarah, what about yourself? Anything new? Um, I wouldn't say anything new, no. Um, just adapting to life at home. Um, I've got three children at home. So <sighs> I'm fed up with baking them lunch every day and dinner and my yeah, so that's been tough being teacher um, between me and my partner and, and working from home and trying to adapt all that. So come the weekend, yeah, I don't really want to clean out my shed or any of my cupboards and I feel really bad because everyone else has been really motivated and cleaning out, but I'm just exhausted. So just chilling out and enjoying the family time. We did do a thousand piece jigsaw that took us about three weeks and nearly got thrown a couple of times, but um, no, just get used to this new new pace of life and trying to keep each other sane. Brilliant, thanks Sarah. Yeah, but the sounds of it, you've got a lot on your hands. I certainly wouldn't like to be thrown in at the deep end to be doing homeschooling and all that kind of stuff. So taking advantage to chill out sounds pretty good to me. Um, as far as, as me, I've not done really anything new um, other than, you know, sort of yeah, no, really nothing new at all. <laughs> um, increasing my, my sugar and caffeine intake, which is perhaps not the best. Um, so I can see maybe a new exercise regime coming in after we get through all this. But at the moment, I, uh, I'm quite happy where I'm at. Um, so on that note, I hope you've enjoyed today's show, everyone. Um, just to let you know, if you want to have a look at any of our online um, groups that we're running, any uh, any other information about Aberdeen and Recovery, you can find that on our website, www.aberdeenandrecovery.org. Um, you can also check out Facebook, at Aberdeen and Recovery, Twitter, Republic underscore air, Instagram, Republic underscore air, we have a new YouTube channel where you can find our um, podcasts from based on the, the radio shows. And our YouTube channel is called Aberdeen and Recovery. And if you have any song requests, topic requests, anything you'd like to speak about, if you want to feature on our show, 
please send us an email. It is chanterbox at aberdeenandrecovery.org. And um, so from all the guys, I just want to say uh, a big thank you for listening to us.